Hey everyone, so this evening I'm going to work on um, fixing up this uh, oil painting here. O overall, I like this. This is based on a sketch I had done out in Wyoming last um, last September. But the original field study, which you can see right over here, looks a bit darker. It's not really that dark in life, but... Um, the original field study didn't have these trees and everything in front. In fact, there was really nothing here but just land. But I like the uh, shapes of the mountains and the way the light was hitting them. So I thought I would um, do a nice painting of it. And like I said, I like the way the field study turned out. But I think this could use a bit more excitement in it. This painting has been sitting like this in my um, studio closet for a number of months. Just not sure, wasn't sure what to do with it. And hopefully now I am somewhat sure. We'll see. If you're uh, watching this on YouTube, um, do me a favor and hit the like button. And if you're watching me on Facebook, you can do the same thing too. If you like it, we'll see. But anyway, first thing I'm going to do is punch up some of these colors here. And bring this tree up a little bit higher. And I might add another tree over here. Now, as I add this paint, I'm using quite a bit of medium. I like to use Galkid. That's my um, usually my medium of choice for uh, reworking things. And as I make these adjustments, I can see that I was really just too, uh, a bit too timid with my color with these yellows. As I make these yellows stronger, it's pushing all of this here back further, which is exactly what I want. Before, it um, didn't seem to have as much depth to it. There's three different things about color that you um, have to be aware of. There's the actual hue, which is just, you know, whether it's yellow, green, blue, so on and so forth. But with that also goes um, color temperature. You can have within um, colors themselves a lot of variety. For instance, you might have a blue that leans more toward red, or you might have a blue that leans more toward um, green. And so that all kind of falls within hue, within color temperature. And then there's value which is very important and that's how light or how dark the color is you can have bright yellows like we have here and now what I'm doing is I'm putting on a dark yellow for the shadow side of the trees and value is arguably the most important aspect of color and then there's intensity and my big problem was the intensity of this painting it needs more of it at least in my opinion we'll see how it turns out maybe i'll hate it later but for right now we're giving it a shot I um, also want to point out that if you're interested, my um, I have a couple spots left in my online painting classes for the month of September. And for those of you on YouTube, 
who will be watching this. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to live stream it because I still have not figured out YouTube live streaming yet. It's really uh, never seems to work right for me. So I'm going to record it and stick it up there. But anyway, YouTube, usually what happens is you sign up on a waiting list. But I'm going to have the link below in the description to actually sign up for the class. But it's only going to be good until um, tomorrow or possibly Friday when I'm going to close it up. The first class is this Saturday. And I have three different um, membership levels. Um, if you want to do the live class, uh, that's available. But I also have where you can pay half the price and just watch um, me do a full painting demo. And the painting demos are anywhere from usually three to four hours where I um, demonstrate a painting. I comment, give instruction, all that. Also, you get uh, downloadable images. I put on there high-res images of the reference photos or field studies and a uh, high-res image of my final painting that you can use to uh, study from. And all the sessions are recorded. Um, you, all the live sessions are recorded. Of course, the full demo is recorded. And um, you also get immediate access when you become a member to all my demonstrations. And if you become a member of the live option, you get access to all the past live um, recordings as well as um, the full demos. So anyway, it's a lot of fun. Um, there's a couple spots left. A lot of great people in there. And I know you'll enjoy it and you'll learn. I'm a pretty passionate teacher. So go check it out if you're interested. And if you're watching this on Facebook, uh, there's not a link, but um, message me. I can't put a link on there yet. And if I do put a link on their Facebook, they kind of penalize you for doing that. So. Okay, so I think what's going to help this painting is if I bring this tree up even higher. I can do one of two things. I can bring, I can make a big tree here, or I can make a bigger tree here. I don't want these trees to be equal in height, but I do want to go for a kind of a steely artifact that was in um, Edgar Payne's book on composition, where there's kind of an exit back into the distance there. I also think bringing this tree up and breaking up this darker gray line here is going to help the composition and going to push everything back. I just have to make sure that I don't end up with even trees. And a lot of times when I do these um, reworkings of paintings, it might go through several stages. You know, I might rework it for a while, put it away, pull it back out again. A couple days, a couple weeks, a couple months later, sometimes a couple years later, and fiddle with it some more. And it really depends on how um, how certain I am of the process. I'll tell you what, I need to get some more yellow ochre. Oh, by the way, by the way, the painting that we're going to be working on for um, September. Let me show it to you here, quick. It's going to be this right here. Um, it's going to be a lakeshore scene. It's going to be about handling bright colors, especially reds, water reflections, things like that. 
Um, so this is what the full demo is of. You get to watch me do this actual painting from start to finish. And then we will be, for those who join the live membership, we'll be repainting this. I'll be repainting it with you step by step um, and going into even further detail. But anyway, just wanted to see that really quick. Let's jump back to this. Love these Hughes easels. So I want to thicken this paint up a little bit more. So I'm going to grab the palette knife. Looks like I might need to get more cadmium yellow light out too. Thinking maybe I might add a second tree right here. I'm not sure if I should go bigger with the tree. I don't want to go too big and have it end up right in the middle and have this big tree cutting this canvas in half. I could go bigger with this one and smaller with this one. I just have to make sure it doesn't end up even with that. Let's go a little bigger with this. Taking a risk here. If this does not work, I'm going to have to repaint all that dark in there. Gonna mix that darker yellow with the palette knife, add some medium to that. But I do want it to have a little bit little bit of a body, if you will. And we definitely need some of that darker paint over here. It's a little too dark, a little too rich. Let's bring that down with some Viridian. Don't like how dark that is. It's too distracting to me. Okay, let's bring this in. A little more variety there.
I like to add foliage um, with a palette knife a lot of times because you can see kind of random effects that you're not going to get with a paintbrush. Okay, I'm going to scoop up a bunch of um, thicker paint, and I want to simplify some of these strokes here. Go for a bit more of an abstract feel. Put a touch of some greens in there. A lot of times with these trees, you know, they don't always shift color at once. You'll have some leaves will retain some green, and that can give a lot of interest too and variety. All right, so now inside the uh, inside these trees, there are some trunks that go up, tree trunks. So I'm going to mix a black out of a couple, a few different colors. I don't want to go real black with it because I think it'll stick out too much. And I'm going to try an imitation badger hairbrush. Make sure we get some medium on that to avoid sinking in. Remember, when you're painting these trees, a lot of times the trunks are visible in the darker areas of the trees, not so much in the lighter areas. The darker areas usually represent an area that's kind of sunk in, where there's an opening through the surface, and that's where you're going to see the trunks. Some of these um, little bare branches will come out at the top here. Some of my favorite cottonwoods are the ones where it's, it's kind of like they're starting to die off a bit. And you get all these branches sticking out. We'll see that might be a bit much. I always want to make sure these are more of an enhancement and they don't take over the whole painting. Drawing too much attention to themselves. Okay, I think I'm going to take a breather in this one. Um, come back and look at it with a fresh eye. Trees might go even taller. We'll see. Uh, I tend, as I said before, to kind of try to sneak up on these. Back in the past, I used to think that it was an um, accomplishment to get a painting done as quick as possible. 
and that is, I've learned that's far from the truth. What matters is what you end up with, not how long it took you to get there. So take my time with it and see if I want to make more adjustments later. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you uh, found this helpful and uh, check out the workshops if you're interested and we'll hopefully see you again soon.